Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince and welcome to episode one of trying to fix the cheapest Rolls Royce in the country. And in this episode today, we're gonna try and fix this door, the driver's door, which is not opening because it's doing my head in. You have to keep going through the passenger side and opening up the lock from here. In fact, with me, I can't get into the passenger side because I've got limited space here working outdoors at the side of the house. So uh, I have to go through the back. But anyway, look, right now, this is unlocked. You can see that this door is working. The other three doors work. This one doesn't. Press this in okay. It's just not doing anything. Now, if I get the key, it looks like the key does have an effect on that, but it still doesn't work. So watch this. If I go this way, you can see I can like lock it like that, then open it, but it's still not opening up. So let's see if we can get this door opening again. Right, so leading over to the front of the beast and watch this. You see the door does in fact open. Stay. Now, before we get too involved with how to take the door panel off, look at the hinge mechanism down here. I've never seen anything look so big and strong. It does need a little bit of work, but check this out. Can you see here we have like a spring and then it clips into that place there. That's the kind of like the, so it's like fully open. Then you've got like a halfway setting and then the rest brings it in. So look, can you see that's like the halfway setting? And just to show you the different levels, you can see there that's like halfway and then if we do it here, it locks into that position there. It will go further, but it will come back to that position. I like that. Then it locks there. And then the next one is shut, but we won't do that because then the door won't open again. Right now, having a quick look around here, what's amazed me is, and for some reason, it doesn't seem right on a car like this, but we've got LEDs. Look, somebody's put an LED. But up here, it looks like there's a little bolt here and here, so I have to get a spanner up, and I'm thinking then that will come out. It looks like we've got a screw here. Do you know what? Apologies, I can't see a thing. It's so sunny, I can't see a thing on my screen. I hope I'm pointing in the right place. Screw here, screw missing there. Then I'm thinking we're just gonna have clips. Oh no, look, there's a screw there. Ah, and there's a screw there as well, it looks like. And here. I don't know whether that would have been done by Rolls-Royce. Yeah, I suppose it would have been. Oh, okay, I thought it would have been clipped into place. Maybe there's plastic clips as well. Not sure. And then I don't know what's going on here. You see that this is going to need a serious amount of work up here because all like the lacquer off the wood's come off. But maybe that can be all scraped back. And of course it can be varnished. I wonder is there a way that I could put some sort of lacquer on it again? So if you haven't guessed, I'm going to need plenty of help in this project here. But I know a lot of my subscribers are really knowledgeable. So hopefully you guys will help me out as we go along and we can kind of... Uh, in a way, working it together. Well, I found one that fits. I can't tell you how comfortable this sill is to sit on. Even a sill's comfortable. I wouldn't mind living in this car. Actually, first of all, let's unplug this little LED. Maybe they're really common on places like eBay. Right, so lefty Lucy. I can see screws under here as well for this top section. So maybe I have to undo them and there might be more bolts on top that I can't see. But I'll start with here. Right, okay, it's uh, it's loosened up, but they don't seem to be getting any looser. So I'm gonna try undoing the two screws that I can see to see if this top section lifts off and then it might make uh, it makes more it might make more sense. Because I, it just seems to be just turning without really coming undone. Right, annoyingly, I can't, it's hard to get up there, so I'm gonna try to undo this screw here and see if this uh, what thing here lifts out. That'll give me more room. No, uh, but maybe I can take the whole surround off because it looks like this is separate. It looks like there's a gap here. So maybe it's separate from uh, this outside bit.
I'd love to know if they're original or not. Would they have just screwed through the uh, the carpet? Here we go. Here we go. Excellent. Well, will you look at that? Yeah, that's actually made out of uh, made out of wood. Some sort of uh, looks like very, very, very thin plywood. And let's put that to one side. It's also got a number here: four nine nine zero. And look at that! Little things like this. I'm already loving it. Metal clips, not plastic. Metal. There you go. That's what you've paid your four thousand pound for. Right, okay, this is uncovered more here now. I think I read that these were made in crew. If that's wrong, you can add it down to the comments down below. And I think these Rolls Royces are supposed to be, you know, people always say about Mercedes, oh, they were much better years ago and stuff. Well, I think these ones are supposed to be in that era when they were still very well made. Right, okay, I should have access now to the screws under here. Is that gonna separate? Whoa. Ah, right, okay, yeah, that's for the uh, that's for the light there, so we should be able to just pop that out. Like so. That is plastic. and stapled, look at the lever stapled on there. Right now we have much more access to here. I can't, I can't tell you how happy I am. I've been wanting to do this for so long. Do you remember when I did my 5,000 subscriber video and I was on about maybe getting a classic car? It was my son that said, why don't you get a Rolls Royce? Because I was looking at uh, a barn, barn fine Ferrari, just went for too much money. And then uh, I was looking at like a Porsche 924. And he said, Dad, why don't you look for a Rolls Royce? And I thought, do you know what? That is a good idea. Yes, look at that. Excellent, it's just a very, very long bolt. I suppose because of the weight of people's elbows against it. And also closing the very heavy doors. Success, excellent. 4990, now is that the same number that was on the door panel? Yes it is, 4990, written in chalk on there. So. Uh, is it because they want the lever to match up exactly? I think, believe it or not, I think in this car, it's used the lever from eight cows. Right, we have to take these off here. So now, it looks like I've got a little thing in here to pry out. Can you see here? Looks like there's a little pry thing there. And with this one, I presume the middle thing comes out. These are for all the electric windows. Come on, come out. Doing it gently because I don't want to scrape it all up. Oh my, my. Oh my, my. That is nice. So look at these posts. They go into little kind of uh, plasticky nylon little washers there. So it just push fits home. Now that there, that's nice. Right, what's happening with this one here? Come on, oh, that feels so nice. You would think that maybe these would vibrate uh, off, but obviously they don't. So, so far, nothing's broken because it's been designed in a way to be repaired. Not plastic clips everywhere. Same thing going on here. That is just lovely. They've made it vince proof.
So the whole panel is now coming off. Excellent. Is this labelled up 4990 anywhere? No, not that I can see. And that is made out of metal. You can see here with the screw there. A very light metal, would it be? No, it feels too flint. Would that be aluminium? What would that be made out of? One second, see if my dad knows. Well, I've asked my dad and he reckons it's tin because it, uh, it kind of feels like a biscuit tin, you know, the way it flexes. Right, okay, so now I can see some sort of pulley thing going on in there. I can see a fair bit of rust, I think, up there. But luckily underneath, it seems to be, seems to be solid enough. I, I think it is anyway. Right, what, uh, this is coming off. Oh, look at all the connections down here. So these windows don't work either on this side. Ah, oh, here we go. Look, you can really get access to it. Shall I take this off completely? Yeah, let me just put this away. Right now, I don't want to get sidetracked because obviously we need to work on the lock and the window will be on a different video. But this window's not working. But check this out, that must be the motor down here, I'm thinking. It looks like it's driven by a chain, like a chain from a motorbike or a bicycle. What? Now that is nice, isn't it? And that's the exact reason why I wanted to get this car, because of interest in stuff like that. I would have thought it was a motor with some kind of mechanism that you would have, like scissor mechanism that you would have on every other car you ever look at. But that there, how does that work? That's a chain. So what's going on up here to, uh, well, the chain goes all the way up to here as well. Anyway, that's going to be for another video. I'm thinking what I have to do is, see, it's like double skinned, isn't it, inside and out. I think I'm going to have to undo maybe this lock here. But the thing is, I'm not going to be able to get to it. It's just going to drop away. But I can't, uh, I mean, does this whole inner skin come out? Maybe it does, I don't know. Doesn't look like it does. See, I don't know if it's welded in or how, what happens there? Hmm. See, if I undo that, it's still not going to give me access to the inside, is it? Hmm, I think this is going to be a lot more complicated than I thought. I need to get right the way in there. Okay, let me have a look around. Let's think about it. Right, the problem is, as far as I can see, I think, unless the front skin comes off, I think it's welded together because that looks like it's part of this here, yeah? So this isn't going to come off from, uh, from this bottom bit here. So there's no point in me like peeling this seal off or anything, which I started to do, because I think it's all kind of welded, formed together. So I think I have to just get through it from the access things. Now, if we think about it here, this is in the open position, yeah? Remember, the seal is not going to be here. Well, sorry, it is, but it's pushed in. So when we close the door, it hits against this, I'm going to call it a striker, here. Ah, and even that, look at that, even that looks nice. <laughs> but it hits against this. Oh, I suppose you can adjust it in and out, that's clever. I'm stacking off that bolt, and then probably use a special tool, or even just mole grips, and tighten it up, loosen it up, and then tighten it up again. You know, that will come in and out. Right, okay, useful to know. Anyway, when that goes in there, it will do this like that and it's going to be locked you can see that the circle there locks in so that goes round this bit here obviously to stop your door flying open yeah now when we press this button here it should then unlock it should unlock this but it's not unlocking it but yet when I do this handle here it does unlock it so watch yeah so this is working that's working the handle's not working. Now, when it comes to the central locking, it looks like there's a bar going down here and it goes all the way down to this area here. And when I lift this up and down, it does sound like it's unlocking things in other areas. Yeah? So, what I'm thinking is, is that is probably okay or might need adjusting. I don't think it's unlocking the other side, but it seems to be unlocking the door behind me. But again, uh, I can worry about that later. So I think the problem is all to do with this mechanism in here. Now, I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to shine a light in there. But I think it's something to do with that in there. 
So I think what I'm going to start to do is, I know you can't see a thing, I can't really see a thing either, it's just too, uh, it's too sunny and it's too dark in there to see anything. But what I'm going to start off with is, let's undo this one, this one and this one and then see what happens. In fact this does look like it's been dented in. It does, doesn't it? That's been dented in. Let's check on the other side. There we have it on this door. It's nice and straight. And I'm just going to get my screwdriver and lock. Can I do it with my finger? No, let me get my screwdriver. So now let's pretend we've locked it. There, like so. Now, if we press the button. Yeah, look at that. It opens. Right, that's locking it. And now... Yeah, look, you sort of press it and then it gently releases after that. I think because it's been bashed in here, it's fouling the little metal thing that comes across into this mechanism to release it. I think this might be fixable. Well, I've got a Torx 30 bit, a T30. I'm gonna to try to take it out. I'm gonna to try to bend this back out and then put it back together because of this dent here. Whoa. Nah, okay. Uh, let's try that again. Yes. Right, that was harder to undo. And is that because of the dent, I wonder? Now, I wonder if I press it now, has it freed it at all? See, I wish I could show you. There's like a, a metal bar that comes out when you press this. And the metal bar is pressing where the handle's hitting, but it's not doing any movement here because I think it's all just wedged. So let's see now if I can get that out of the way. What I need to do is I need to try to pull this out. How am I going to do that? I wonder, can I get to it from the inside and give it a little knock with a hammer? I've got to stay away from the window. The window's up, so I'm not going to break that. And it's here I want to hit, isn't it? I wonder would I be able to knock it out there or is that going to cause major damage? Can I lever it out here? Maybe. Maybe, look at that. If there's any Rolls Royce engineers watching this, they're probably just crying. But remember, I'm a telephone engineer. Right, while I'm trying to get this dent out using a completely inappropriate tool, let's give a shout out to the Might Make Vince Massive. It's people like the Massive that make projects like this possible. Amazing projects like this. So, the Massive consists of KipDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, DJVG, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, the My Mate Vince fan club over on Facebook, Braden Butts from Connecticut, Kenneth Blenstrup Sorensen, and Simba Tinabu. Massive thank you to each and every one of you guys and everybody on Patreon. The list at the end of this video will have all the Patreon members. Thank you so much. There you go, you can just see. Can you just see this thing here? This is the bar I'm talking about. This little thing here. See, maybe it's broken. It just seems to be loose. I don't know what that's supposed to attach to. I presume it's supposed to go in this lock. Right, do you see that white thing there? When you press the handle on the outside, that's what pushes towards you, yeah? So watch this now. Can you see? Let's push it. That then goes across that kind of pole thing there. Uh, just impossible to show you, but basically that thing goes and it comes out across to this area here, but it's not connected to anything. I think that's the problem. Right, I really can't see how I'm gonna do this. So what I'm gonna try to do is actually take off the handle. Now that's easier said than done. I can see if I go through this massive hole here, I can see a bolt that will hopefully undo. Annoyingly, the other access hole is this, and you see the problem. But I'm wondering 
slightly wary because uh, I don't want to chop my hand off if this electric window ever kicked in. Do you know what? I haven't even looked to see where the battery is in this car. I'm wondering if I can do this here and somehow work my uh, hand under there to clip this on the other side, you know? But to begin with, let's worry about this bit here. Yes, come on, done really easy. Now, if this drops, I should be okay. I should be able to just recover it from down here. Right, I'm gonna angle it down. Hopefully, it will come away in here. Yes, it has. Oops, excellent, got it. Right now. How on earth am I going to do this? Need to get my hands. Let me get a screw. Oh no, I can get my finger. Hold on now. I might be lucky. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nearly, nearly. Yes, I've done it. Unbelievable. Haha, <laughs> I'm on it. I think I was made to work on Rolls Royces. Well, I'd better grab the other side in case it goes flying off. Anyway, the handle, the handle is off. Oh, the bolt's in here. Excellent. Well, maybe it was just a washer that fell out. Something fell down. I'll worry about that later. Oh, here we go, look, here, washers. So I suppose there's a washer front and back, so I found one. I've got to find the other one as well. Right. Okay, we've got a problem. Uh, that's loose, that's loose. There's another nut, there's another bolt here. Do I need to get to that? I do, don't I? I really need this whole thing to come off. Mind you, where's the hole? If there's only a hole here, that's not really going to gain me much. Let me see if I can get to it. No, I can't get to it. So basically, it's here, which is kind of lining up. It's just on the inside of here. I don't know how anybody, anyone would be able to get to it. I don't know what tool you'd need to get in there. Do you know what? Undoing that, unfortunately, hasn't really helped me. Right, well, I've been just fiddling around here and this dropped out like a little collet and it's actually come off that bar that I'm talking about from the uh, pressing the button there. Do you know what I think? I think I'm going to have to take out the whole kind of locking mechanism. So I presume this is going to unscrew. We already know that from the one that's missing up there. Is it going to unscrew? Hold on. Yes, that unscrews there. I think if I was to undo these three bolts here, undo this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, maybe I can work its work the work its way out uh, without worrying about the window, because the window's up and the mechanism's here, I might be able to work my way behind it, you know, maybe I'll have to undo some of the connectors here, we have quite a few, uh, we've got quite a few connectors down here, but I think that's what I'm going to do because I can't see how else we can get to anything. And then maybe once that's out, I might be able to get my hand up there and use a spanner to get that part out there to actually get the lock out. So I think that is what I'm gonna work on. Looking here, I can actually see that the thing that this screws onto also has a nut. So I suppose you can adjust the amount that this sticks up which is uh, quite a nice little uh, quite a nice little feature.
Oh, it just turns like that. Yeah, just uh, goes around there. Okay, so that's uh, that's free. Now, is this going to become free? Well, let me undo these connectors down here. I'm just going to take a picture of that just in case they're the same as each other. Well, they're a little bit chalky, they are, on the inside. They're not the best of uh, connections. I haven't got any contact cleaner with me, but next time I come here, I'm gonna put some deoxit in there. Oh, I haven't said it yet in these videos, but obviously don't do what I do. Take this purely for entertainment. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing and what I'm doing may be dangerous. I'm going to undo these two as well because they're keeping this rod that goes up to the uh, thing that unlocks and locks the uh, doors nice and straight. Oh yeah, look, the rod that goes up fits in between these two bits. No, and now through here. I'm wondering if you have to take out the whole electric window assembly. The problem is we've got cables going up for the pulleys around, uh, around the area. Oh, well this has come out here and it's got a micro switch on. Would that be to do with the central locking? I suppose it is, so it knows when it's open and closed. Not sure. I think I'm going to have to undo this motor here for the uh, the windows, and that might allow the motor to push back a little bit. So basically, we have a, it looks like we have a massive one here. bolt here going through and also there's going to be one the other side and I think we've got a little blank in here we've got a blank in one here and also we're uh, here as well so let's undo them and see if that gives me a bit more room I'm just going to do this bit by bit just in case it's under any sort of tension No, okay, so that's not under any uh, tension there. Now, is this going to allow a bit of movement? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, yes, here we go. Right. Excellent. I mean, this is all useful anyway, because I have to get to the window motor eventually. Maybe it'll be in the next video. Come on now, you're gonna come out? What are you stuck on now? Ah, oh, wire, a wire's stuck. The wire feeding it, where does that go to? Oh, we got another, we got another contact here. Here we go. Right, so, does that go up to here? There we go. Now, will you come out? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Right, excellent. Come on, then. Come on. It's going to give up its secrets eventually. What am I caught on? Now I'm caught on something else.
Oh, I don't believe it. The lock is connected to the lock, isn't it, on the other side? So I have to undo <laughs> that lock. Oh man. Lock's loose anyway, so it needs to be uh, it needs to be tightened. In fact, I can undo it by hand, I think. Yes, I can. I'm undoing it by hand. Excellent. Right, well that nut's undone. Let's see if the lock pulls out from the other side. Okay, so the nut that I undone was just to actually keep this attached to the door, but this lock itself is attached to the whole central locking bars and stuff via a nut just showing the torch in here. There you go. Can you see I've got a spanner around that nut there? So that's the one that I have to undo. You can see the spanner going down. Apologies, it's very hard to film because everything is just getting access through this big hole down here up and I just say uh, I just can't film it. Let me undo that nut there and then let's see if the uh, lock comes out. Then at long last I might be able to get this out. I don't fancy my chances of getting it back in but uh, maybe when I have it out it will make sense because right now I just see bars going everywhere and I haven't got a clue what's doing. Right, I can get it by hand now. Okay. Right, so we've got some weird kind of washer with a nice oblong cutout on it and the nut there. So now, is that going to lift off? Yes, it is. And I've got the big locking nut that gets the lock actually in place and that will pull it right the way into the door there you go I've got a nice picture there right okay now be good to me <coughs> Timsey Auto Air do you recognize that come on come on come on come on come on we're so close Da -da, da -da 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 -da. We are free, we are free. Now we can put that down on the floor and try to work out what's what, see how badly I've bent things. And I wanna also take this bit out here as well. Hallelujah. Right, let's get this laid out and now see if we can work out what's going on. No, first, I want to see now if I can uh, get access and take out that last bolt here because really we need to get this mechanism out so we can find out what's going on. Actually, do you know, thinking about it, these need to be redone anyway, so I'll be quite curious how they come off. We've got a bolt here, bolt here and bolt here. I wonder if I undid them three, would this lift off? The answer to that is no. It also has two hidden screws at the front of the door and the back of the door underneath the seals. Now, I do the back one first and it's a complete headache, but luckily the front one comes off a piece of cake. The front one hasn't been messed with before and it comes off lovely and easy. The back one is a complete and utter nightmare because it's been cross-threaded. It doesn't go all the way in, it's already halfway out. So uh, it's been messed with before and the inside is all dented. This part here does probably take me about 20 minutes to get this screw out. It's not that interesting, so I'm just gonna skip through this bit here with uh, this voiceover. So now, next part of this video you will see is this wood bit actually lift off. Now, is this gonna come off? Come on. Oh, fantastic. Look at that piece of walnut, is it? Is it walnut? It's marked up here as well. I believe that they use the same uh, veneer to all match this in. So 
So now I should be able to get access in here much more, uh, yeah, much more easily now. So let's get that nut out. I don't believe it, I still can't get to it because it's tucked away under that bit there and I don't have to take the glass out and everything. So, but you can see where the white thing is now. But from there on the right hand side, you see the little bar coming out. Well, that bar then goes across to in here and beforehand, this bar was all the way over here. Yeah, you can see it now, this bit here. So it was, when you were pressing in, it was pressing it over here. I'm wondering whether it's designed just to go down. And then when you press the button, it will just go downwards here. So, see now, can I actually? Yeah, that, like that, I don't know if you, if you can see that. So I think, let's leave that where it is. Let's have a look at the lock. We might be able to make sense now of where that should be going. Right, so this is the mechanism here, roughly laid out how it should be. So you can see that this down here is to do with the central locking. We've got this one here that goes to the actual key lock itself. This one is the internal handle. This is the thing that shows you whether the, the, the car's locked or not, and also if you want to lock it or open it from the inside. That's that one there. And then we've got this one here, which, uh, Again, what does this one, do you know what, I'm not, I haven't actually looked into what that one there does. But, obviously something to do with the central locking, maybe if your door's open or something it doesn't allow the lock to go off, don't know. But anyway, check this out. I think I know what the problem is. So let me get the camera on the tripod and I'll show you. Right, so we're going to pretend that the screwdriver is the striker thing on the car. So, right now you can see that that is locked. If we use the inside catch, like before, it opens up. Yeah, but check this out. There's also a catch around this side here. And if you have a look, it's like white nylon. There's a little uh, hole in the middle of it there. And that's where the door handle, bit that comes out the door handle, goes into, down through this bit here. Now watch, watch this bit here. Can you see? Opens up again. So somehow, and I don't know how, It's come apart from here. Now obviously it's been damaged, so I think what's happened is maybe it got damaged and maybe it got jammed, somehow got jammed. And of course when somebody's taken it apart to have a look at it, maybe they freed that bit up but didn't put it back together. I'm not too sure. I mean there's a chance that the thing goes through here and then maybe there's supposed to be a nut on this side to screw into it to keep it in place rather than just kind of like pushed in the top. But when it's pushed in the top it shouldn't go anywhere because the handle's bolted, this is bolted, how can it possibly move? So I think it was the damage that caused this to go wrong. There you go. So I think when we get it back together and put that back in there and the handle presses down, look, it doesn't take much to release that. I presume this video is probably quite long as it was because taking this out was a nightmare. To put it back in is just a reversal of taking it apart, but obviously it's easier said than done. It's gonna be a complete headache because I've gotta get all this in to places that I can't see. It's just my hands feeling. And it's just gonna be a nightmare to film because I can't show you in between the door skins. So uh, yeah, hopefully next time you see this, it will be back together. I need to line up the handle in this bit here and just try to get it all lined up. I'm not gonna put the door panel and stuff back on because I need to electric windows the... to see why it's not working on that one there. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed, next time you see this, it will be, uh, it will be working. Right, watch this. So you can see now that it's locked. And if I do this, whee, it opens. Now it's not back together at all. I've only done this bit here. And it took a while to get the pin from here to locate down into it. I'm still very confused about what the bit is above the bit that gets pushed down for here. So I'm not sure whether there's gonna be issues with central locking or not, but that can be for another video. Can you see there? And look, it seems to be that kind of delayed thing again. There. So maybe it just needs to be greased up a bit, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely doing it, and it wasn't doing it before because that locating pin from here wasn't going into here. Excellent. Right, now I've got the headache of trying to do all the inside bits. Do you know, I was just wondering, looking here, you can see that it's marked around the edge, and I thought, should there be washers? Now look at these ones here. Can you see they're nice slotted screws with a nice surround around them? Now look here. On this one, again, you see slotted screws. And if we go to the front one round here, again, you see they're all matching too there. 
and three there slotted screws. So obviously these Torx bit here are uh, something that somebody's put in when they were attempting to repair or maybe when this was bashed up before, I'm not too sure. So yeah, that's a bit of a shame that. I'm slowly starting to get there, it's not easy. I've managed to get the central locking back into place here, but I had to undo most of these linkage ones here. And now if you have a look, you can see that I've got it uh, coming through here. So I just have to put it back into, it's kind of like, uh, again, it's like a plastic, there you go. It's like a plastic little, uh, I don't know what to call it really. But yeah, you push them into there. So now I need to get the locking one back on. Interestingly, over here, it does say crew. It says crew and London. So yeah, there we have it. And I had to undo this window winder mechanism here. So it went around a pulley here, up here, and it locked into place on this thing here. I had to undo it because I couldn't get all the linkages past it. It was in the way. And then I think the one from here coming across was the wrong side of it. So yeah. I'll be honest with you, it's, it's, it's no, it's not the easiest job, especially not to kind of start with, but I think I'm getting there. I think I am starting to win. Now, do you remember this bit here for this thing? Looking down here, there's no way that that's gonna fit right against here. So I think what it is, is I think this bolts to here and I think, uh, I think this bolts to these bits here and I think that goes on that bit like that. That's what I think it is moving up and down there. So it's just to stop it from straying too far, keeping it away from the window maybe. That's what I think. I've connected up all the wires. Luckily I took pictures because it's amazing how you forget. So let's see first of all, is the central locking working? That sounds good. Hold on, let's look here. Up, yes. Fantastic. Let's go over here. Amazing. And that one there is broken anyway. So that looks like it's working. Now let's see if the handle's working. So that's, let's uh, do it so it's all open, right? So that's all open. Now, oh, one second, let me just try to put the seal back. Okay, so the seal's back on. Amazingly, it's still really supple. You'd think it'd be all cracked and uh, hard by now, but no, it's okay. Just noticed there's a little light down here as well. Right, here goes. Hope I don't smash the window. Right, that's closed. I haven't put the handle on yet. Yes! <laughs> it works! Brilliant. Fantastic. Right, let's see if the uh, central locking works with the key. Because that wasn't working earlier. So, put the key in and... Right, that locks it there. Excellent! It locks it here. Right, and open. Ah! Right, okay, and try that again. No, it's only opening this one here. It's not opening this one here. Can you see that's still down? So it only opens the driver's door. I presume that's not correct. But if I do this, then it opens the other one as well. I'm wondering if that's an alignment problem. Because look, when we do this, it, maybe it's not lifting this up enough, so maybe I have to kind of shorten the throw there so it puts more force to push that up. But anyway, we'll worry about that in another, uh, in another episode. Looks like the handle is now working. Right, let me try to get the handle properly back on and then uh, I can finish up the video. Now I'm gonna leave off all these bits for the time being because we need access to the window motor and everything like that, so I can worry about that at a later stage. So there we have it, the handle is back on, and check it out. Ready? Ta-da! It is now working. It sounds rattly and stuff just because everything's missing from the inside. But the handle's working, how good is that? If I'm honest with you, it doesn't fit as nice as this one here, but maybe it needs a bit of fine fettling. But the main thing is we can now get into the car. So that is it for the end of the first episode. Not sure what I'm gonna do next. Maybe I should do the window because as you can see, it's all gaffer taped up at the moment. Maybe that would be an interesting one. Find out why the electric windows are not working. So uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. And hopefully all the other episodes will be as enjoyable. If you enjoyed it, 
give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you're enjoying this because there's going to be plenty more videos in the coming weeks, months and who knows, maybe even years. Take care everyone, I'll see you soon.